Hello, Stan Smith again. If you're familiar with my channel, you're probably thinking this looks familiar. Yeah, I'm still coming up with ideas with this howling at the moon image. I'm not sure, but I might be on the verge of wolfing out. That's an insider joke for those Wednesday Adams fans. So I'm going to speed this up for the sake of time. And as you can tell, I'm cutting this out with my jigsaw. It cut this quarter inch MDF quite easily. And I'm using a 21 tooth per inch blade. It left a fairly smooth edge. I realize this looks a bit dangerous at high speed, but all is good. Still have all my digits. And yes, that includes my toes. Okay, that's enough about me. Let's get back to the project. It's actually quite fun cutting out these pointy bush things. When I first drew this, I had no particular flora in mind. But if I had to nail it down, I would say they are agava, also known as century plants, due to their habit of only flowering once. But when they do, it is spectacular. Some species can grow a stalk as high as 30 feet in the air with a huge bracket of white flowers at the top. More than you probably wanted to know, right? But better than talking about my feet. And as for the howler here, I'll let you decide what he or she is. Could be your family dog, a coyote, or possibly a wolf. You may be familiar with my other channel, Stuff from Stan. It's a camping, outdoor kind of thing. Anyway, I enjoy hearing coyotes howling in the distance, with the emphasis on in the distance. I'm going to do just a little bit of detail cleanup work using my scroll saw. Probably not really necessary, but because I convinced my wife that I needed this, I pretty much have to use it once in a while, or I'll look stupid. And that's already a pretty much an uphill battle as it is. Okay, jumping ahead a little bit. I've cut the moon out of some of that same quarter inch MDF material and I've glued some spacers on the back that I've already pre-drilled some holes in here for the a wire hanger. And um, this is pretty much what we have so far. So the next step is to put some paint on it. I'm going to go ahead and paint the coyote background here black and I'm going to paint the moon um, a bluish white and then uh, we'll proceed with the epoxy resin color top coat on the moon and also on the coyote and uh, so that'll be the next step. Okay so I've been doing some more work when you weren't looking I've gone ahead and put a coat of paint of latex on this, some white with a little bit of blue mixed into it. And I didn't really mix it up very good, kind of give it this blotchy look because the resin will show through. Um, so this might give it a good background effect. And um, so I'm fixing to mix the resin. And I'll show you a little trick I've got here where I mix the the resin, you're supposed to mix it equal parts, so what I've done is pre-marked this cup. I poured a th one third cup of water in and marked it, and then I poured in another one third cup of water in and marked that. So if I fill my hardener and my resin to these lines, then I'll know I'll have it equal parts. So that's what I'll do now. You may have noticed a change in scenery. I've moved out to the garage. I mean, uh, open air studio for the resin pour. And also, you may have noticed I've got one coat of black paint on the coyote and the foreground. I'm going to need to sand it and do another coat or two before it's ready. Okay, let's go ahead and pour some resin. Equal parts resin and hardener and stir for four minutes. I'm using Pro Marine. It's worked good for me, and it's not an outrageous price like some of the resin I have seen online. Time to add some color. 
You can color this stuff with just about anything. I'm using acrylic. The colors are violet, brilliant purple, and medium magenta. If you're new to resin and haven't tried coloring with mica powder, you need to try it. I think it's my favorite. I just decided to go old school on this project. So again, I have edited some stuff out for time's sake, but there is no trick photography here. If I look like I don't have it all together, it's pretty much because I don't. If I waited till I had a real good thought out plan before I did something, I don't think I'd get much done. So I say go for it. It was Vincent Van Gogh that once said, what would life be if we had no courage to attempt anything? And I know what you're thinking. Isn't he the guy that cut his ear off? Okay, how about this? After giving something a fair amount of consideration and some planning, then go for it. Okay, it's been a few days and we're ready for the clear top coat of resin. I've glued down the foreground scenery so it can't float away when I pour the resin over it. And also I have a temporary tape border to retain the resin until I can get it all covered. Then I'll pull it off and let it level out naturally. You may have noticed I have a lot of bubbles in my resin. No worries. This means I get to use my propane torch. This yellow bottle is actually what they call map gas. It's just a higher octane of propane, if you will. It burns a little hotter. I use it for bending metal, but it works fine for bubble popping too. And this automatic start stop button is fun as all get outs. So here it is, all finished. I think it came out pretty good, even if I have to say so myself. Um, but it's um, ready to hang, and I will be putting it in my new Etsy store, which only has a couple of things in it, but I'm going to be adding some more in case you're interested. I'll put a link in the description below. It goes by the same name as my YouTube channel, Is Not Is Too art studio. So, and if you're interested in this kind of content, would you consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that like button? And if you already have and are, thank you very much. And until next time, God bless.